So Spike, we got a, a YouTube comment from somebody. I don't usually look at the comments, but every so often I have to because okay. I have to go into the YouTube studio and, and move some stuff around. We got a YouTube comment from somebody that said, uh, can we stop I think it was something like, can we stop pretending like Jack is a Republican or something like that? Or did I miss the joke when we realized that Jack is not actually a Republican, right? Which is okay. which is weird because like you know, I voted for Larry Elder when he was running for uh, the the governor of California. Okay. I voted for Mitt Romney. And what I found is so fascinating now about the way that the GOP views themselves is they often will say, uh, we want people to be independent thinkers. We don't want any thought police. We don't want anybody out there telling the left out there wants other people to think exactly how they do. Right. And then when I come out and I say, I support trans youth and trans adults. People go, you're not a Republican. You don't think like us. Thought criminal. It happens every single time. No matter how much I say, hey, you guys, like, I voted for Larry Elder. I voted for Mitt Romney. Blah, 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 blah. People go, you're just a rhino, right? Because it's always the trans thing, which I find fascinating that people who value independent thought and independent speech the most amount of pushback I get on almost any issue is two things. Don't hit your kids. Uh, support trans people. Those two things, for whatever reason, light people up like you would not believe. And I get called everything under the sun for simply saying, like, hey, you know, this is complex science. This is complex neuroanatomy. This is com very, very complex uh, neurobiologic phenomenon. Like, let's talk about it like adults. And instead, what I get is people going, Bing! <laughs> Heathen! So the uh, swimmer Riley Gaines has parlayed a mediocre swimming career into being a spokesperson for kind of women's sports. Now That's I'm a big yeah. I'm I'm a big supporter of women's sports, and I think I know how to fix the whole trans athlete thing. But a lot of these people don't want solutions, so they don't actually talk about solutions. But anyway, right. so she was talking to Brian Kilmeade about how the head coach of the South Carolina basketball team said that if trans women wanted to play on their team, that they could do so. Now, this is a very decorated coach. This is somebody who has done very well for themselves in women's sports. They, I don't, they just came off a perfect undefeated season. Really? Winning a national championship yesterday. Wow. Okay. 38-0. Yeah, no. So The lady knows what she's talking about when it comes to women's basketball. So Riley Gaines, I will say this. I feel awful for Riley Gaines in this sense. When Riley Gaines went to go speak at that one college and those college students held her hostage. And that oh, yeah, was, and that uh, utility that was room or something. way over yeah. the top. Like yeah, I, yes. I think that Riley Gaines should be able to have her bad opinions, but... <laughs> But he, when you watch her actually talk about this issue, she's not actually talking about any solutions here. Can we play this really quick? This is my main issue with, with the whole trans athlete thing. When you're just mocking and scorning and deriding you're, and you're not offering a solution, it tells me that you don't really care about the issue. It tells me that you're making a ton of money off of this. So here, here's uh, Riley Gaines lost an NCAA championship to a trans athlete, as you know. Former swimmer, Division I swimmer, outkick contributor Riley Gaines joins us now. Riley, Dawn Staley, the point guard, do you think that she'd want to play against men? Does she really believe what she's saying? It's okay for a transgender athlete to play against her, her women? Of course, I don't think she believes this. And look, I love and respect Dawn Staley. Two championships in three years. And in three years at South Carolina, she's won two championships. I think her record is 109 and three. That's unprecedented. So so clearly she's great at what she does and she's developed many incredible athletes whom I admire, but she's either proven yourself to your point to be entirely incompetent or a sellout. And okay, really quick, really quick. You can't say this person has achieved literally the highest heights of athletic achievement mm -hmm. in coaching and then follow that up with they're either incompetent or they're selling out, right? Right. Because one of those, one of those isn't in a thing. Yeah. You one cannot of these things beat. things doesn't belong what, here. <laughs> Elmo will tell you. One of yeah. these things is not like the other. Right. You cannot be incompetent in the world of sports and then also go have an undefeated season. So basically what she's saying tacitly is that she is a sellout. Now, that's an interesting argument to make, or it could just be that the coach understands the changing of the times and understands that they are t perfectly fine morally or ethically having trans women on her team. Now, you can disagree with that, 
but that doesn't necessarily mean that she is in some way, shape, or form a sellout. Now, does Riley Gaines, can we keep playing this? Because I don't think Riley Gaines offers a solution the entire time she's wasting everybody's time on Fox News. Uh, if you watch the video, her silence, the hesitation, and that, that drink of water, I think it spoke volumes. I think she knew she had to be politically correct, and I mm. know about as good as anyone that that pressure exists, and it's real. But the bottom line is she knows perfectly well that men's basketball, it's a totally different sport than women's basketball. Not That's really. obvious by the speed of the game, the size of the ball, the sheer amount of, of layups in women's basketball compared to dunks when a player gets a fast break in men's basketball, the distance of the three-point line, the list goes on. So what I think this boils down to is she didn't have the courage to stand with women. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for oh. her, and she blew it. And, and truthfully, my guess is she's okay with it until her yeah. team defeated by one or more men playing on the opposite team. People so let's pause really. So yeah. what what that is, you'll notice that Riley Gaines has not offered any any solutions out there. No. So this is what I want to pitch to Riley Gaines. This has been my solution for many, many, many years. Okay. And I think it would be really great if Riley Gaines and I joined forces because we both care about women's sports. Okay. And we both care about trans people, obviously. Riley Gaines <laughs> isn't a bigot and a transphobe. Okay. Right? Obviously. Okay. <laughs> so the way that we do this is we have a national trans sports league, kind of like how they have the Paralympics. Mm -hmm. And you take athletes who are, because there's only a couple hundred uh, trans athletes in the entire country. This is yeah, this is fact. And so what we do is in the same way that the Paralympics is funded by either generous contributions or the state, mm -hmm. we fund a league for trans athletes to compete in. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now at the high school level, just let trans kids play sports. Right. I think the governor of Utah actually had the best take on this, which is that. It's a complex medical issue. Mm -hmm. Let these kids play the sports. Unfortunately, he was overruled by his uh, legislative, or not the legislative. Yeah, there was yes, the legislative, legislative body. They yes, overruled the him because he's a bigot. Yep. But we start a, a national trans league for trans athletes at that level who can perform at that level. And we'll call it the Riley Gaines Jack Stein Trans League for trans athletes <laughs> and home for wayward dogs, right? We'll throw in, <laughs> we'll adopt out dogs oh, at the I like same this. time, this right? Oh, like this. This is good. Yeah, cuz that's where you get your federal money. Exactly. Yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll have like and it's it's all trans athletes, right? Uh -huh. And we'll do like it'll be like exactly like the Olympics. 2 weeks every year where these athletes come and they compete. Compete, yeah. And it'll International be stage. it'll be beautiful and it'll be amazing. And I'll contribute money to it. And Riley Gaines, with all the money she's making, <laughs> make she, a ton. she can contribute money to it. And then we've removed, right, we've removed that aspect from uh, any kind of scrutiny at, at that level because now we're giving a safe place for trans athletes to compete, right? I think that's a good compromise. I, I like your compromise. It's The coach of South Carolina was just trying to do, she was trying to do in her own small way exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Making people feel welcome. Yeah. You know, the coach said, hey, if, if if you're a woman, you play women's sports. If you think and feel like you're a woman, you should be able to play women's sports. Riley Gaines is visiting LeBron James in a wig, <laughs> showing up to tip the scales in her particular game. Right. I, don't she, I don't think she understands truly what transgenderism really, really is. It's gonna, not LeBron in a wig. I'm going to default to former President Donald Trump on this issue. Oh, Because okay. I think that he said one of the kindest, most generous things that somebody could say when faced with an issue about transgender individuals. Really? It was when somebody asked him about uh, women, trans women using the bathrooms in in Trump Tower. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, what would you do if Caitlyn Jenner wanted to use the bathroom in your... In one of your, in your, yeah, in your beautiful... In, yeah. in one of your buildings. And Trump said she can use any bathroom she wants. That's beautiful. Now... Do with that what you will, but like I think that people need to understand that unless you're trying to be solution oriented, and if you're just complaining and whining and b-wording like uh, uh, Riley Gaines is doing, you are not actually contributing to the discourse. You're just being a naysayer. And so I then to Riley Gaines say, nay, nay, like get out. This is embarrassing. <laughs> Have a solution or don't talk about it. Right? If you can't think of anything to do other than to try to malign people and undercut their efficacy or call their morals or ethics into question yep, it's yep, like yep, okay yep. lady you've contributed nothing other than to being a living facebook meme like go sell your book somewhere i'm not yep. i'm not trying to be mean to riley Gaines, but i'm like lady like you've been whining about this for years and you've never thought to yourself one time how can i actually help these people as opposed to 
being sarcastic and casting aspersions. So is there a lot of money in uh, contributing to the discourse? Is there? Yeah, because she, she's, she's, she's not she's, she's getting any money there. I, I mean, she wrote a book about it where she's in her bathing suit. And then she was also in that that uh, conservative uh, sexy time calendar. Oh, oh the sexy women of, of, of uh, solid thinking yeah, and, exactly. and good sense ideas. Exactly, which a yeah. lot of people are against. But Riley Gaines, call me. Call me. We could solve this problem. Me and you, the Riley Gaines, Jack Stein, International League of Transgender Athletes and Home for Wayward Dogs. It'll sell like hotcakes. Coming soon. You to can an sell arena your book near there, you. too, yeah. if you want to. <laughs> a little, little table up front. 